is a big day. We are going to enter the Kiel Canal. All last summer, we made our way to northwest Spain from Greece, deep inside the Mediterranean Sea. This summer, we have already traveled over 1,300 nautical miles to be on the doorstep of the Baltic Sea. Hello, Karen and Tom welcoming you to our Life 4.0, where we explore this amazing planet one anchorage at a time. This video is part of a series where we start from the northwest corner of Spain and go all the way up to the Swedish and Finnish archipelagos in the Baltic Sea. Our first challenge was crossing the often tempestuous Bay of Biscay to land on and explore the beautifully rugged Brittany coast of France. We continued northeast along the English Channel first along the north coast of France, including the historic and charming Channel Islands, then along the south coast of England. After rounding the White Cliffs of Dover, we spend too little time in Belgium and the Netherlands before making a beeline for the Kiel Canal and the entrance into the Baltic Sea. We hop along the north coast of Germany before turning sea roads north to explore the amazing Swedish eastern coast. Our furthest reaches found us in Turku and Henko, Finland. What a wonderful part of the world. We hope you enjoy. channel area here we got a little tanker coming through Lyria we're outside of the channel buoy so we're pretty safe there but we got lots of cool stuff over here to look at this is a whole area of staging for uh, the wind farm so you've got blades stacked up down there in the ground with the red tips on them and then these things are the nacelle the module at the um, top of the tower that holds the blades and where the turbines are inside all the machinery so you can see those circle areas where the each of the three blades attaches to these things are gigantic if you just look at the size of that truck with its mobile crane as perspective so this is offshore wind activity all the way up and down uh, this barrier island area between Germany and Netherlands and really um, all the way down the coast to Spain. This is um, what I believe is an uh, extension of the dike system they have along the banks. We saw this back in Cuxhaven. Pretty substantial sized dike and then they had buildings in the village behind it. You can see how shallow the water is right close up. There's a stake there. Uh, so, find your P's and Q's there. I will. And your finger. fathoms. Yep. Oh, actually, that plant looks like that's where they oh. may build the nacelles right there. Wow. For the wind turbines. Good for Germany. Convenient, right there where they need to be loaded on the ship. Got a lot going on over here. We got a little, I don't know, it looks like a pilot boat, a gray one, but there's a tug towing this old ship. Maybe it's broken down, and they were just given permission to cross over the channel here. It's a super busy uh, part of the River Elbe as ships get ready to go into the Kiel Canal right up here. And, um, so this tug is pulling the ship and they're going to go in along the side and the other tug came right out right behind them and there's a loose line on the stern of the ship being towed so we're thinking that line there right on the stern is what this other tug is going to come into and grab that ship in order to help slow it down so it doesn't with momentum doesn't just like override the, the uh, tug that's pulling kind of complicated to, uh, yeah, you can see the forward tug slowing down and the ship 
being towed speeding up, so they could be easily overrun with that. So this other tug looks like it's standing by to assist. So we just called in the Raiders a little while ago to ask for when it's appropriate for us to cross this river and to get set up to go into the canal and they gave us the buoy number 57 Alpha that we can leave from on this side. This is the, we're on the um, odd side of the channel and we can go over to 60 and then wait there for clearance to go into the canal. Right here. This is where 57 Alpha, where we're allowed, given permission to cross over up into this area to wait uh, for entrance into the canal. Hopefully our wait won't be long, but we have no idea how they're going to sort of prioritize us versus the commercial traffic. And we just sort of take a step back and uh, we're a lower priority, obviously, than all the commercial traffic. So we're just going to wait our turn. Just as we were approaching the lock waiting area, we saw another pleasure craft, this sailboat in front of us here, move quickly toward the lock. It wasn't entirely clear what was said on the radio, but because we were so close to this other boat, Tom decided to scramble and get all of our fenders and lines ready while I motored toward the lock opening, hoping to be included in the fun. All right, I think we got a white. <laughs> Right? Don't you think that? On the right? Yes. I would say that's a go. Yeah. There was already a large commercial tanker in the lock. We had heard that this was common practice, so we scooted inside and tied up. In this lock, you tie to this very low floating dock. Since fenders also float, ours kept slipping up over the dock, so Tom had quite a job keeping our hull from scraping along the dock. The floating platform was so far down that Tom had to add our step to make getting on and off the boat a little easier. Soon, the alarm sounds, indicating the lock doors are opening. takes a while for the guys in front of us to move out, but then we're on our way. All right, we're in the Kiel Canal. I think it's a cross section of a ship. Because that one's tapered in. Wow. It's huge. Oh, now you have a ship coming down, too. So we thought this tug was related to this ship, but it's not. It's like a privately owned tug for like a tour. Wolfman and this ship, all wreck, was just calling them on 73. No answer. In the meantime, he's kind of shoved over a little bit, making us have a little narrower passage on this right side here. It's going pretty fast. Yeah. 
also called the Nord Ostsee Canal. This waterway is 98 kilometers long, and it was finished in 1895. An average of 250 nautical miles is saved by using this canal instead of going around Denmark's Jutland Peninsula. According to Wikipedia, the Kiel Canal is the busiest man-made waterway in the world, with an average of 100 ships passing through it every day. We could easily transit this in a single day, but we've heard the town of Rendsburg, two-thirds of the way through the canal, is a pleasant stopover, and this will allow us to meet up with our friend Pedro, who will be on board with us for a week. And this is the, um, the signal lights that they have along here, so there's a flashing definitely flashing green on the bottom and I don't know if it's the daylight sunlight shown on the top it looks like the top two are red it'll be much more easy to read at nighttime but we're going to take the green uh, yeah it looks like the, the green is the only thing flashing the red must, must be the sun reflecting off the lenses there the uh, speed limit here is 15 kilometers per hour so uh, about Knots. Coming up to this this bridge up here that you can see something hanging below it on the left hand side and this is one of the last um, like trolley bridges uh, trolleys that run below a bridge that exists in the world so I'll find out more about it and I'll talk about it but I just wanted to show it off here all right this trolley is moving it's going across the bottom of the bridge this bridge was opened in 1913 and was, at the time, the longest bridge in Germany, a title it held for 99 years. See our video description for links to more information. All right, it looks like they're going to wait for me since I'm cruising through here. This is Rendsburg. We're going to be staying in a different part of Rendsburg uh, tonight along on a little offshoot off the canal. Cool. I've never seen this. That's a ferry. It's pretty trippy. Probably going to start going here in just a minute. All hell's breaking loose here. We got hail coming down. We just got tied up in Rendsburg. And uh, we saw this on the forecast. Got all tied up. <laughs> And oh my gosh, we're happy we got tied up. What's this? Oh. Happy? I'm happy to be saddled? Yes. Yeah. We got the code zero down, super fast. Super fast. Don't have to worry about that anymore. An hour later, all was tranquil. So I'm in Rendsburg, and this elevated train track section up here is a big circle that raises the train up high enough to go across the bridge, the Kiel Canal, just beyond this area here. So quite an engineering feat there to get the train across the canal. And this street has to be the Darling Street of the uh, Town of Rendsburg, the little gem, these beautiful brick houses with all the detail in the front there, and a little tiny driveway for your little tiny European car. Get a sense of the uh, height that they had to create for this bridge, railroad bridge, and all the towers to do that to get up high enough. Back at the marina, it's just above the water level. So they circle, do a big circle around to the town and get enough height and over the canal. And there goes the train. It's like a local regional train. Going by at the ribs there. So we were just looking at this architecture and uh, everything is sort of a little gollywonkous, but it's pretty cool. Bricks are all at different patterns. The glass is really beautiful. And we noticed this um, 
somebody put a windmill in this pattern of these bricks. Pretty cool. And these doors are beautiful. Look at the number of colors of paint on this door. It says 1609. I wonder if this building could really be 1609. Certainly old. dock that you can tie to at the end of the canal, the um, Keel Canal, and it has the kiosk that you can pay your tariff for going through the, uh, the lock. So it's pretty convenient. A bunch of boats just got off the lock, or I'm sorry, got off the dock and went into the canal. So not quite sure why these boats aren't coming over to pay. Maybe they have some way that they've already paid or something. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, most people, I think you're supposed to stop at this end and pay your, pay your toll. All right, this is a pretty huge lock. So there's a bunch of sailboats in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine or 10. They waited for us and we got all tied off on here. And then we're gonna head out. So there's a bunch of ships behind us that are getting ready to come into locks after us. This door slides across, this gate slides across, which is interesting. I've never seen one slide across like this before. Um, it's a little slow, but uh, I guess that's all right. All right, so we just came through the Kiel Canal, out into the Kiel Fjord here. We're officially in the Baltic Sea. U.S. Navy ship flying the stars and stripes there. They are not on AIS, so we don't know what the name of the ship is. But I'm sure she's here for all the things going on with Ukraine. Beautiful, tall ship. A lot of old ships along here for Kiel Week. One of the, I think it's the biggest sailing event, sailing race. Um, in the world according to what people have told us. So this is the last day of the event. And we get to experience a little bit of that. So we sail back out of Kiel Fjord. We secure a berth in the harbor of Le Beau and enjoy the shore attractions before calling it a night. We set off for a remote anchorage off of Heiligenhofen, Germany. The windswept hook that protects this anchorage is a nature preserve. So we remained on the boat and enjoyed the views from afar. Thanks for watching. Join us next time as we hop toward Germany's largest national park on the Baltic coast, which is famous for their unique lagoons, or bodens, and their constantly changing coastline.